All right, everybody, welcome back. Let's get going. You are uh, watching, listening to the, what, fourth episode of the Survivor Roy San Northfield Farm Behind the Seeds podcast. Today, we are going to be talking about episode six, Why Me? And uh, as always, my name is JJ Moran, and I am joined here with executive producer, Liam Houghton. Hello, thanks, JJ. Um, I said it last week that that might be our best episode, but watching this episode, I think this this might be my favorite episode. <laughs> you texted me that yesterday, and that was the first thing I thought. I was like, I think each week we're going to have to say that this is our favorite episodes because uh, I, I I do love this one as well. I know I said I we kind of said this like right at the end of the podcast last week, where you were like, I'm excited for six. I'm personally really excited for seven, but I, we'll save that any of that for next week. So. Uh, Leo, why don't you tell me why why do you why do we love this episode so much? Yeah, this episode of this podcast is going to be a lot of me doing this to myself, but I think this it's like a really fun artsy experimental episode. There's a lot of I think each segment has something that it feels like Survivor, but it clearly is different than traditional Survivor. So I'm excited to get into it and talk about my mindset and what I was thinking with each little segment. So let's start actually with the first segment. So it kind of, so this is our what second episode in a row that we started with a cold open and not started with the theme song. And I like it. The little like, like starts just on a black screen. And then we hear, Hey, Pittman, they're chilling. They're, they're trying to make fire the old fashioned way. I think that is when you say like, it feels like actual survivor. That is totally a moment that like when I was going back and reviewing that footage, it totally feels like actual survivor. They're literally trying to make fire with Flint. Yeah. It's the black screen with the noise that comes back at the challenge with the bell, but it's them making fire starting the second day. It's lighting the fire, getting going for the second day of competition. And they all, it is a fun juxtaposition from the previous episode. I was where just about to say that all wow, last night was great. We didn't have to do anything. We really got to know each other and we had a great night's sleep. And that brings us into the episode. If you're binging these episodes and you're watching them successively, you get to the end of five and it is the morning at Gibson and they're having about as bad of a morning as you can have. I mean, they just immediately wake up and they're thrown into the metaphorical fire where they're all just scrambling and, and stressing out. And then they go to this really you know contentious, stressful tribal um, uh, and then it, that episode ends. And again, if you're just binging it and the next one starts, it is the exact opposite. It is the yin and yang. You check in on Pittman, which this is not the first time we've had that this season. Yeah. I feel like we mentioned that on one of the other episodes where it's, you know, the, the haves and the have nots it's, uh, we check on the have nots first. And then the next episode starts with just some people who are having a really good time and they're talking about how they all slept really well and like, and uh yeah no i th i think it's a really nice kind of just like light fun way to start the episode but yeah it really like like you said it, it gets you into it um anything from that uh cold open that we want to talk about no um, i think it it really is just them making fire talking about how well they slept yeah. and then we hit the intro and go over to gibson and we go over to gibson um I, I think it is funny how it, it, Gibson, the first time we check in on Gibson is we get right away to Michelle. Oh, well, we actually mentioned in last week's podcast, so let's address it now. Why did Michelle not play her idol at, at, at the last tribal? Yeah, she left it at camp and <laughs> she didn't bring it to the tribal. Um, I think that shows you how blindsided she was by Isaiah telling everyone that she had the idol and that feeds right into so she's paranoid or pissed that isaiah told everyone she goes looking finds the second one and that feeds into i think a really interesting idol strategy and mindset she has for this episode of i found this one a hidden immunity idol and i have this other one that isn't hidden so if i play this one everyone's gonna think i'm done when in reality i'm re establishing the idol that she already had it's kind of a weird yeah. interesting unique idol dynamic it's a great strategy for her i mean it works out perfectly everybody would like to find a second idol right away yeah. sort of thing but uh you know it, it, it that was one of the idols too that we had had there all weekend like she yep. was just the first one to find it but i mean this is obviously the the campers had the from thursday night thursday night when we split them up they could have found it then 
all day Friday. Anyone at Gibson could have found it then. Michelle is the first one to look under that little, uh, what are those things? Those like little watering just, plant things. Planters. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just, but they're um, right there. Like they're yeah. like we kind of talked about again in the last episode where, especially at the Gibson camp, there's only so many places we can hide it. And um, but yeah, nobody looked there. And so so Michelle or maybe they did and they just didn't 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 look through the fine tooth comb. But Michelle did and she finds it at the perfect time because, yeah, to your point, I mean, it, it's funny. So my my 10 year old niece is watching this. And last week I spoke to her about I asked her how she was liking these episodes. And the first thing that she said to me, she was like, I like Michelle, but why did she tell those guys that she has the idol? And I was <laughs> like, I don't know. Man. Um, but uh yeah, no, I mean, it is that classic, like, and you feel that again, that's another thing where, like, I feel like when you watch the real show, there's a lot of times where I'm standing yelling at the television being like, don't tell them, what are you doing? And, you know, she does that and immediately comes back to bite her and Isaiah is spilling the beans. Uh, but yeah, no, it works out at the beginning of this first episode four. She goes out, she hunts, she grabs another idol, and now she can kind of move on and has that extra security blanket going uh, further in the game, which is great for her. Yeah. It's a get out of jail free card, if you will. It's oh, the survivor right. gods threw her a bone on that one. But hope you messed up this one. Try again. Yep. Um, and and she does again. She plays it right. I think like by by burning the one at, later, yeah. not to get ahead of ourselves, but at at tribal, burning the one that everybody knew about is great because now that wipes the slate clean. Everybody thinks, oh, Michelle's idol list, but she's actually sitting on one still, which is cool. Um. And then do we go back to Pittman before the challenge? Yeah, we go back to Pittman. It's really, it's it's kind of another Zach versus... The, uh, that's what I actually, I just looked actually, at my notes and I wrote silly Zach. And I yeah. was like, oh yeah, I, I love silly Zach. Yeah, but, but that's another, I'm, it's, it was fun to portray. We have Zach saying, hey, I'm going to dumb myself down. I'm trying to make it so people are not taking me too seriously. And then that's when you hit the silly music kind of portraying him the way that he's trying to portray himself to the other campers. So. What's, in, what's in your hat? It's in there. Come hither. Pat myself on that one. That was a <laughs> artsy fartsy. This is the art episode. But most of Pittman was also driven by idle talk. And it is, it's Zach covering his bases just in case Jen or Darren have an idol and Ashley not being able to find her way in just in case they have an idol and, and then, have an idol. And they're talking about the yes. potential pass of it. If we win, I have to find a way to pass it over <laughs> to them. Yeah, no, I mean that at that moment is great. And then again, uh, not to get ahead of ourselves, but ultimately Jen does pass off that idol. And so that's a successful, you know, like that, that little conversation that you see at the beginning of the episode or towards the beginning of the episode, does ultimately pay off because um it's it is crazy to me like like or i guess not that crazy I, I don't know jen had an idol she didn't need to give it to karen but she really wanted to keep gibson she wanted to secure the gibson numbers going into the merge and so yeah i mean it was very important for her to hand that off and um wait was that actually the one that would have been nullified at merge yeah so that's another aspect yeah they kind of knew merge was coming up so do it now or forever hold your peace yeah which is yeah. also impressive that michelle found both full game idols not only did she find two idols she found the two powerful ones but so you want yeah we can jump right to the challenge let's do it so gross food eating challenge but it wasn't too gross i think we weren't trying to make it disgusting it's no. eggs it's um a farm so it feeds into that and one anyone. of my very high-pitched voice moments that ends up on camera is in this challenge where I go, we're just trying to feed you breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> like, Some people think they're good, see? I don't know I why. like it. it is. <laughs> but, you're uh, very, I guess you can tell that you've been defensive. As the, ho as the host role, too, it's like you are kind of, you are the ref, you are the punching bag. Yeah. So it yeah. shows that you are a day and a half into this. Hey, yeah. don't look at me, I don't look at me. It is funny too. No, but I mean, to your point, I mean, not, uh, certainly not that we've done other eating challenges here at Grayson and this is not the grossest one that we've done by far. We made people eat bugs one year and all this stuff. And so like, if you like 
See, I personally, if I was a camper, I would not have done well with this because I don't even really, I, I, I don't eat a regular hard boiled egg. Like it's just not my vibe. And so I would not have done well here, but then you could see someone like Ashley, she must love hard boiled eggs yeah. because she just had absolutely no problem with it. And, um, and yeah, I mean the radish flavor, some people don't really like radishes, but like jalapeno, I like jalapeno flavored stuff. So like, I don't know, not actually that terrible. So it really was um it really was just more of a show of like let's get these people to let's get them all on camera because yeah. essentially too i did a, a note that i wrote is do we want to talk about why we didn't make it a race between the two of them Probably yeah because well. yeah, this is old school survivor they always had just eat and compete or whatever and get the point point. and the point is to really get to the tiebreaker yes and we structured the two post swap challenges we came into the season hoping or suspecting that there could be people on the outs and both these challenges theoretically one person could win it for the entire tribe so it can kind of negate the potential of throwing it to get out the odd people out and also lose it for the entire tribe too yeah. because my first question at tribal was why did you guys send isaiah and i i mean i rewatched the footage now and i asked the same question to myself now where i'm like it really doesn't make any sense he had a hard time getting that first one down and matt didn't and yeah matt's matt's answer is just kind of like i don't know i'm, I'm not a speed guy i'm like well yeah but like i don't know you i feel like you could have been like, yeah <laughs> it, it, um, it is a uh... As soon as Ashley saw that Isaiah wasn't ripping through it, she totally took her time. Yeah, she so was... like it's one of those things where like Matt probably could have gone toe to toe with Ashley, yeah. and but yeah, they just didn't even try it. They sent Not Isaiah, fair. which felt weird. Yeah, because Matt did the two rounds because they were down in numbers, so someone had to go twice. But yeah, enough for it's at the end of the thing it's like, like ashley had eaten four hard-boiled eggs that's like a good amount of eggs <laughs> like that's a healthy amount so if you made four challenge. scrambled eggs i'd be like jesus this is a yeah, lot of eggs, yeah. lot of eggs. <laughs> but, um um yeah and it, i don't if you can go back and catch it i show the handoff in the challenge i don't know it's hard to catch it's um so it's like that scene of Jen giving Karen the idol is shown twice. You just have to be paying attention and look. It really, I, having seen this episode 10 times, probably half the time I actually remember to pay attention and look for it. So the way that, just for context for people watching, the way that Liam and I do these edits is that he puts all of like the storyboard, the storylines and everything together and then gives me a, a pretty good rough cut and especially this episode i didn't really honestly have to touch much um and then i go through and I, I clean it up as someone who has worked as an editor before professionally like i just take it i mix audio you know do color corrections and stuff like that so when i'm watching that when i'm sitting down to do my turn editing it's a, the edit episode's already put together and i did exactly just that i did not notice when i did my first pass of uh of the challenge i didn't even notice at all and then and i'm going through pretty slowly too like i'm going through each segment of each episode with a pretty fine tooth comb you know because i'm just like trying again I'm, I'm doing little minute things mixing audio and like oh this is a little shaky kind of like crop that moment out or something like that that's my role in it so each segment i'll spend an hour or two just sitting there kind of trying to perfect each little segment and i did not notice at all when i went through the challenge and then when i got to editing the next segment where karen brings up the fact that they did the handoff i was like oh do you see that and then i went back and i checked oh yeah sure enough it is right there that's the shot uh we yeah. just punch in on it a little bit and and then when you hear it within context of karen talking about the handoff then it becomes like, oh, oh, yeah, it's pretty obvious. They're right there. But um, but no, it's uh it it was a sly moment on the on both of their parts, and uh good good for Jen for for doing it. Um and good for Karen for getting away with it. Like Jen was worried about at the beginning of the episode, these things were not these were not the smallest idols we've ever made for this show. Like they were bulky and like you know, round and thick, and they had a big string attached to them and everything. Like they were not an easy thing to just kind of like slip away. Uh, but they managed to do it. Nobody noticed. Yes, very impressive. Should we so talk about yeah, talk about the Gibson pre-tribal? Gibson pre-tribal. Um, 
it feels like again i so i was not there i, I after they lose the challenges, I filmed the confessionals with the campers, but I am not actually in camp with them. So it was hard for me to, I couldn't really remember, but it feels like in the edit, things do really change. Like sometimes the, the challenges end and they go down and they talk to each other and the decision is kind of made within 10 minutes. And that is really not how this one went at all. Like there is a, a clear sense when they go down that it's going to be another split between Gibson and Pittman. And then by the end, they all go to tribal knowing that they're going to vote for Isaiah. Yeah. So this is another pat myself. This is a interesting having the. So first, it's like you can handle the handoff in two separate ways, right? It's you can keep it secret from the audience until she plays it, then do a flashback. But honestly, Karen's the footage of her walking around camp talking to the camera was too good not to show. So it's like, OK establish that karen has an idol and it's almost okay isaiah is going to go home this tribal because of this idol and then really the dilemma isn't is it going to be this person or this person is it are matt and michelle going to flip and set themselves up to be that middle workable pair going into the next phase of the game so it's a fun little twist on the traditional a b tribal um segment if you will right and and it does feel i think it feels that way when you watch it i'm trying to i try to sit there and not be like too uh biased by just having experienced it on the weekend but what i was kind of going to say is that it reflects how i felt going in at going into that tribal that weekend because i remember knowing what we you know what is makes it into the edit on camera which is that i was like oh karen's gonna i was sad obviously isaiah was just as entertaining in person as he is on camera so like it was one of these things where i could have used that man being on camera all weekend or i wouldn't have complained you know what i mean so it was one of these things when it was clear to us that uh that they were gonna uh use that idol and 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 bounce isaiah it was sad because it didn't really seem like he had a way out and it was like oh man okay he's gonna go but then that did become the intriguing part it was like oh is matt matt came into this talking like he wants to be mr hero mr classic like good guy and stick with his original alliances and all this stuff and then the fact that he's sitting around going like oh, maybe we should throw isaiah under the bus you know so uh that ultimately is what happened and that was a you know cool move yeah i think that it's this episode is driven by idols and idol finds and idol handoff and idol plays. But at the end of the episode, it really comes down to relationships. And I think that's a good little, that's the artsy experimental aspect of this episode. It's survivor. You can throw as much idols at the wall as you want, but at the end of the day, it's, can I work with this person to get further in the game? And I think this is a great episode to kind of, Cap encapsulate or to show that if you will. Yep. Um, okay, so then let's just jump into tribal real quick. Um, let's talk about that. So again, I mean, we've kind of already talked about it, you know. The, the, it, that's what happens. I mean, they they burn Michelle uses her idol to to clean hers, get hers out of her pocket. Um, Karen uses hers to get rid of Isaiah, Matt flips. Uh, and so you know, it is what it is. Isaiah goes home. Isaiah was a great sport about it, by the way. I loved not only, you know, he shakes everybody's hands when he's sitting there. Yeah, and it's fun. His, his little, you know, good uh, sayonara, goodbye confessional. He is very great sport about it. Like, yeah. not that anyone this weekend was a bad sport when they lost, but like, you know, he genuinely was like, what a cool move. He's just, he's a guy who like, he plays a lot of board games and, you know, he's just you know, a video game guy and everything. So like, I think he le just legitimately was like, wow, sick move. That was awesome. And, yeah. um, and, you know, I think that shows on camera, but uh, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think though, anything notable that actually happened at Tribal? No, it's, you've taught, I think we touched upon it every step of the way. Why yeah. did Matt not eat? And yeah, but Isaiah, yeah, great pre-merge survivor character. You can't totally. ask for anything more. Uh, and also we have mentioned this, we've mentioned this when other people have uh, gone home, but 
Isaiah was also one of those folks who ended up staying the whole weekend. So even though I was sad he wasn't on camera for the rest of the weekend, we still got that witty little son of a gun. <laughs> uh, he, he was on the farm with us the whole the whole next two days. So it was it was great. He was a presence around the entire time, and uh, and we give big props to Isaiah. So uh, I'm we are coming up right on the twenty minute mark right now. Uh, we are so grateful. This podcast has actually gotten a little bit of fan mail fan mail so to speak we've gotten comments and people have asked us to speak on some stuff so um this so we're gonna just dive into it we have a few questions um and we'll read them both do we want to say they're both former contestants yeah. <laughs> these aren't internet strangers um so fan mail this is from at sir rendar who is is that darren that's Darren. Current, yes. <laughs> yeah, so Darren, current contestant on this yeah. current season of Survivor. He he asks, Darren asks, um, would love to hear more about the casting process. It feels like each tribe had mirrors that fit into certain archetypes, like the leader and the joker. So he's referring to the last last week's episode where we did the uh uh where we did the survivor summit and we had asked them to bring a leader and a joker out. And so he's you know noticing that, like, hey, is that something that we tried to do when we were setting up these tribes? Liam? Um, yeah, kind of. Not so much exactly what roles, but there are definitely mirrors for um each tribe from the starting tribe. Um it's like the subtle theme. I I wanted it to feel like like a group a, a friend group going out to like camp and like you would see in any like horror type movie, and then they slowly start disappearing, which is what Survivor is. So yeah, I try to match them up. Like Matt and Harris, I think matched up because I think they're both financy econ guys and kind of leadery types. And then Darren and Zach, I think they match up as the more like witty, maybe and odd jobby type like type person. And then I think you have Karen and Carrie kind of match up pretty good. That's what. Have we mentioned at this point in the podcast what we know about Carrie and Karen? I don't think so. Uh, this way, this is a fun little story that I just love. So it's something that we took into great consideration this uh, season going into it. And we can say this now because Carrie's not in the show. But we didn't want anybody to... We wanted no pre-existing alliances. And we made that very clear. Uh, you know, uh, Darren's asking about what the casting process looks like. Well, one of the parts of the process was telling people who were applying we ask that you just let us know if you have applied with anybody else or if anybody else you know is already accepted into the season because we don't want pre-existing people we said thank you for applying but that's a big thing that we're trying to do this year well some people wanted to get in uh regardless and carrie and karen did in fact know each other um and they hid that from us the entire time all the way through casting and right up until I mean, they, literally through the weekend, they did not, we did not find out this, or it was not confirmed to us until Carrie got voted out. And I think she, by the time she's at Ponderosa, she finally mentioned to us, they went to such great lengths that, th th and this is the best part of the story, is that in my mind, it's like, yes, they lied to us that we asked them in their interviews, do you know anybody? Do you know anybody? No, no. The weekend comes and they drove there together. Now, Northfield Farm, the farm that we film on is not anywhere near a major transportation hub it is not near any bus stops it is not near any train stations or anything like that people do not just arrive by foot to this farm but we had a lot of things going on and so what they did and i don't think they banked on this but they just you know i don't think they banked on us being busy they just banked on us not recognizing what was going on and it kind of worked out that was a karen who had the car i think it was carrie had the car and that dropped karen <laughs> off at the top of the hill so she dropped her off just like literally maybe 200 yards up the road from this on just a complete dirt road path in the middle of nowhere, New Hampshire. And so, so Carrie comes, pulls up with all the other contestants, gets out of her car, starts unpacking her things. We greet her. We welcome her, yada, yada. Karen just walks down the hill and just turns the path just in the middle of the kind of the woods, just comes out of the woods on foot, walks right up to the farm, checks in like everybody else. And none of us noticed that she walked yeah. up on foot. It was, which I just think is hilarious. Yeah, and it awesome. speaks to the, like, you know, it's one of these things. We didn't want people to have preexisting uh, relationships because we didn't want people to have advantages in the game but that was one of those things moments where in my mind i was like they did kind of get away with it they also didn't 
because they never ended up playing on the same tribe together. Um, but uh, the fact that they were willing to go to such great lengths in my mind spoke to just like how bad they both wanted to play. And those were the kind of people that we wanted there that weekend. So I guess that's the little Carrie Karen story. I love it. Uh, but you, Liam, if I'm not mistaken, you were suspicious that they might've known each other, right? Yeah, it was just, so yeah. Cause forget even why I was suspicious. It was, so if you really go back, we did a couple podcasts with to cover Merrimack Madness with uh, McKenna, who does a bunch of LRGs and is part of the specialist podcast universe, if anyone is familiar with that. So I sent the application to her to say, hey, like, thanks for covering this. If you're interested in playing next our next season, yada, yada, yada. She said, I'm busy, blah, 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 but my girlfriend can, and that's how we got Carrie. And then I think like a month or two later, we got an application from Karen and it was like, how the hell did she get this application? But whatever. Oh, she's from Chile. That's interesting. Blah, 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 blah. So yeah, I think that was the suspicious of where did like how this connection came, but it worked and because out. of your suspicion, you did put them on two yeah. different tribes. You were like, just in case they do know each other. And then sure enough, when Carrie gets voted out, she tells us that. And we were like, oh, oh yeah. we called it. Yeah. Um, do you want to read John's comment or should we save that for next week's episode? Because um, pushing... no, we, can, we can cover it now because it's talking okay. about episode five. Yep. Um, do you have it up? I don't have it. Up. I don't. Okay. Um, I just, he was talking about back in the Survivor Summit, Darren picks Jen and he's asking, did he pick her because of the idol? Um, I said it probably didn't hurt, but for his pick, it was down to Rachel and Jen. So really, I think it's more did Harris pick Karen, knowing that Darren would have the next pick and potentially be down in the numbers, giving him the idol because they didn't know we were going to go random draw after the draft. So theoretically, Harris could think, okay, I'm picking first. I'm getting the three, Darren's getting the two, I'll pick Karen, challenge beast Karen, and then uh, Darren can pick Jen, who has the idol. I think that was probably the thinking on that one. Challenge challenge beast Karen. Challenge we, beast Karen. We love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. That Because honestly, yeah, I, I after you said that, I did remember reading that. And I was like, I don't know, he probably thought <laughs> about that, like maybe. Probably. <laughs> uh, probably a better question for him, actually. So they're yeah. the two commenters asking Yeah, exactly. Questions. Darren, <laughs> go answer that comment. Go back and answer. Um, All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, that was everything I had uh, for this episode. We've got, we covered our little fan mail from episode five. Anybody else, not just former contestants, John and Darren, but if you guys would like, keep asking questions. Anyone who's watching this right now, feel free to comment. Uh, I'll start to just launch into the end. Comment, like, subscribe, share, do all that good stuff. Uh, we thank you guys for watching these episodes and we thank you for engaging with us online. We will be happy to read other comments and questions uh, in future episodes. We like answering these questions and ultimately the, the podcast itself was, you know, we decided to do this just so we could talk a little bit behind the scenes. So if you guys have questions, specific questions about behind the scenes, we'd love to bring them up. So anyways, so feel free to do that. And uh, we will bring more of that kind of stuff to you in future episodes. Uh, as always, next Wednesday, we've got episode seven coming out. As we said in the next time on Survivor, we've got the merge week, merge week, get ready. Uh, it's a big one. I love this episode. Uh, I already started jumping into the edit myself. Uh, I got myself all excited last night looking at it. So anyway, so we're really excited. Uh, you got to check it out. The Merge next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard. Get ready. Um, the You know, this is really when the, the season, we, we've we already hit the ground running at this point. But, you know, th this is where rubber meets road sort of thing. And so we're excited. Liam, any last oh, yeah. notes? No, I'm excited. Merge time, baby. Merge time, baby. All right. To See all you. of you watching, good night. Good night.